Let's raise our hands as we pray for these lovely ones. Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for these dear ones, Lord, who are standing in your house this morning. Lord, we bless you for the ministry you are putting them. We thank you for the service, Lord, you are involved in and what you have done and what you are doing. It is our prayer in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you bless them. You lift them. You use them. You expand the territory of their influence. All for the glory and honor of your name. Our Father, we thank you for the donation of the curtain that is before us. We praise you because of the hands that have given. We speak a word of blessing upon the giver. The Lord will follow your word to do it in the life of whoever has given. Father, as we sit down to listen to your word, we pray that you speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Since our three hour lecture is uh, 50 minutes ministry, let's just bless everybody. Hallelujah. <coughs> Best we have in the air, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Right, um, we have been having uh, revivals back in, um, back in the church where I serve as a senior pastor. They began on Friday because of the season, and um, they are ending today. I had talked with the secretary. Who is the secretary? I had talked to her and I told her, I'll come around on, on Saturday so that I have, because I have a small cube in this town where I, where when I'm tired, I sleep. So I said, you don't need to arrange for, arrange for accommodation for me because I have somewhere to spend. Um, so when I f we finished the meeting and I wanted to leave, last evening, then my wife, I think she has ministered here quite a number of times, she told me, no, 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 you, you don't need to go. Um, wake up in the morning, and I'll ensure that you leave in good time. So we set our alarm, both of us, our alarm at four, <laughs> so that if one fails, there's no excuse. <laughs> but thank God they all behaved so honorably that by four I was up, prepared myself to come. Um, normally if you have a car, there's always a normal behavior you must do, check basically on the level of oil and check on the level of water. So those are crucial things about the car. So this morning I woke up and misbehaved. I never checked those things. <coughs> so I just jumped in the car and began driving all the way from Western to come this side. On the way, the vehicle refused. <laughs> the temperatures were very high. And uh, there was a notice to check my engine oil. Then it stopped. So I was there for about, what do I do? Then I rang our colleague, Dr. Shichira is a lecturer here. He comes from nearby where I was. I told him, guy, wake up. He said, I've just woken up. Come with your car. You, you pick mine, which is told, and you give me yours. So that I can go and do ministry. So he delayed, but he arrived. So we put water in the thing and be, it behaved again. <laughs> so the correct speed young we are moja plus. As in Kakuja and Kakuja Kufika Tarubu, Kakakata Tena. Something which has never happened with this car. <clears throat> so what I did, I say no. So where I say where you stop, I'll leave you there. <laughs> so what I did, I closed the windows off the road there. I said I have a business to do. I have a deal with Universal Veldoret Christian Union. A vehicle can't stand the way your ministry. Tim Kaja Kakari Valley, Kasema Kabo. 
I'll think about you when I'm done with ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> That's why I came late one hour late. So I'm not thinking about it. When I'm done, I'll think about it. Let's go to the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Let's read from the book of, um, of John chapter 20. John chapter 20, verse 1. The Bible says, Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and I saw that the stone had been rolled, had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one Jesus loved and said, and of course when he's talking about the one Jesus loved, John is talking about himself. But there are moments when you speak and you, you avoid mentioning yourself. Let people discover for themselves. Isn't it? So she, she came to running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb. And we don't know where they have put him. Verse 3, the Bible says, So Peter and the other disciple, that's John now, started for the tomb. Both were running. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. The other disciple must have been lighter than myself. This is John, eh? He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded out by itself, separate from the linen. Verse 8, finally the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. That is John again. He saw and he believed. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, uh, we are reading, um, let me just get there, then we will be done. Matthew chapter 28, thank you. There we are. Um, verse 1, and I'll go up to verse 6. The Bible says, after the supper at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Verse 2, there was a violent earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. And going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. And his clothes were white as snow. The cards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Verse 5. The angel said to the woman, the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. Verse 6. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Praise the Lord. The tomb is empty. The tomb is empty. I say the tomb is empty. Hallelujah. Today, this Sunday, the 9th of April, 2023, we are all gathered in this hall as part of the Universal Brotherhood family of men and women who believe that the tomb is empty. Amen. Why? It's because if the doom still has remains, the Bible is very clear. Misisi ni watu wa kurumiwa sana. Rudi kwa room, ufanya preparation ya esabu and whatever you are preparing for Monday because you are in for a bad thing. But because the tomb is empty, 
We are here this Sunday to celebrate an event in history, an unprecedented event in the world history, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The church has got three important dates that we can never avoid in our calendar year. The first one is the Christmas. The second one is the Good Friday. And the other one is the Easter. But I want to say this. If there was no Easter, Christmas would be meaningless. You better get that one there. If there was no Easter, Christmas is meaningless. And that even Friday won't be the Good Friday we talk about. We won't even celebrate any of them if Jesus never rose up. Do you know that, church? We won't even celebrate any one of them if Jesus never rose up. There will be no Easter. But because of Easter, because of the resurrection of Christ, then Christmas has a meaning. Then Good Friday is indeed a Good Friday. It has a meaning. And we give God the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a man of God called John Stott. He said that we live and die. But Christ died and lives. The next step for you is death. Amen. That's where we are headed to. But Jesus Christ died and lives. Amen. That is the greatness. And therefore the resurrection of Jesus Christ places Jesus in his own category. Christianity is based on the fact of crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. And without these two facts, there won't be a church. Without the fact that Jesus Christ was crucified, and he rose up from the grave. There will be no church. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 14. That um, and if, that's NIV. And if Christ has not been raised. Our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. As I told you. Kama yesu akondan, bado akondan yakaburi, hacha fufuka. Tafadali funga virako vyako sasa. Enda sogomo. Kwa rumu yako. Uwanze kutianda kwa mutiana mbae inaanza on Tuesday. Mimi ni rudi ni chukwe kari yangu. Amba kwenye ni miyacha kwa barabara. Ni rudi western ni jivinjari. Lakini kwa sababu you high. Praise the name of the Lord. We are here to celebrate the reason Jesus Christ. The amplified version of the Bible puts it in a good way. It says, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain, useless, amounting to nothing. And your faith is also vain. It is imaginary, is unfounded, devoid of value and a benefit. Not based on truth. That's what the Bible says. But because he is alive, our preaching is not in vain. Hallelujah. You know, we have a lot of vain preachings and a vain faith which is based on one who lived and died. But our faith is based on one who died and lives. Look at it in your hand. In this university and everywhere you walk, you find people who have put their faith not in one, their faith is in one who lived and died and that story ends there. But our faith is superior. The one who is have died and lives. Hallelujah. But whenever we contemplate 
the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a few questions always arise. And around this season of Easter, the media always tries to put forth some articles, some documentaries to shoot at Christianity. You know where I come from? For those who come from western part of this country, there is a Jesus of Tongaren. <clears throat> I don't know why these guys are so much common in western Kenya, because you see, there is a Jesus of Tongaren. <clears throat> Tongaren is part of Bungoma County. And over this Easter moment, people were looking for him <laughs> to crucify him. <clears throat> and the man, if you read on the social media, he was busy defending why he should not be crucified. They're just only trying to, to, to reduce the, the power. They're just trying to, to shoot at our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. Whenever you have, let me tell you, church, whenever you have an imitation, the original exists. You didn't hear that. You think about the exam. Whenever you have an imitation, the original exists. So when you see Jesus of Tongaren, then Jesus of Nazareth is there. <laughs> amen, amen. Hallelujah. There was also a Jehovah Wanyonyi. What was Bungoma Munatuleteanga Zana Nyinyi? There was also a Jehovah Wanyonyi. Whenever you see Jehovah Wanyonyi, then there is a Jehovah, the creator of heaven and earth. Whenever there is, a, there, is a, there, is a, there is an imitation, whenever there is a generic, the original exists. Hallelujah. That's why when you see fake religions on the face of the earth, rest assured that the original exists. Praise be to God, I have found the original one. I'm not faking around my life. I have found Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I want to focus on some three questions here. Some three questions here. Number one, the question is, did Jesus really rise from the dead? Number two, did Jesus know that he would die and be resurrected? And number three, what does the resurrection mean to us this morning? I want to address the first one. Did Jesus really rise from the dead? I do this because I know what you meet, what you normally meet with in your classes and your, your moment, uh, places of interaction. The questions to challenge about the fact, to, to really challenge the, the fact that Jesus Christ died. Now, people have attempted to object to the fact that Jesus Christ rose up. Number one, they say that the disciples fabricated the resurrection. Number two, they say the gospel set forth one of the many ancient resurrection stories. That what is said about the resurrection of Jesus Christ is one of the ancient stories that was being put there. Number three, that the disciples suffered from some sort of hallucination. Hallucination. It was a question of the, the thing of the mind. Then number four, they say that the women and the disciples who went to the wrong tomb was not the one where he was laid in. It's the wrong one. Others say that Jesus did not actually die, but he is simply a walk in the tomb. Then others say that the person they killed was not Jesus. He was a, a, a look-alike of Jesus. These are things which are everywhere. I want to bring forth an argument against these allegations. That the disciples fabricated the resurrection. Let me tell you, church. There is no way the disciples will have fabricated the resurrection of Jesus Christ 
because their loyalty to Jesus was so costly. The fact that they were followers of Jesus, it was too expensive, it was too costly to say I'm born again, that I belong to Jesus Christ. Why do you risk your life beyond there and fabricate a story to endanger you much more? So this story does not hold at all. Are we together? Through, secondly, even the disciples themselves, Thomas called Didymus, is one of them, did not even believe that what, when the woman, women ran and told them, oh, he's risen. They said, ah, talk to, ah, I can't believe this. What is that? I don't know, ah, can't tell me. Paka nishike kwa harama za mikono yake, ndiyo niyamini ya kwamba mepupuka. So the question that they were fabricating this story, I want to tell you, does not hold water. Amen. So na yo watu ambao walikuwa na associate na Yesu Kristo wakati huo, ilikuwa ni ngumu, ilikuwa ni, ni painful, you pay even by your blood. Asa mtu kama mekufa, why do you again create a story that is, he rose up again? The best is, thank God, he alikufa, waje tunele na maisha. Why do you endanger your life? So that first argument does not hold water, we throw it in the dust and say it doesn't hold any water. It's just like we are going for mandamano. Na umepotesa ototo wako mandamano. Utamuka tenu wete kwa mandamano. Utaenda? Sama, ini, umatoto wangu amekufa kwa mandamano. Then ni amuki ukusita amuka uko. Because it's very risky to do it. Are we together, church? Others say that the gospel set forth one of the old resurrection stories. There is no story in the Bible that records this kind of resurrection except the unique story about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this one does not hold water. Others say that the disciples of Jesus Christ suffer some kind of hallucination. You know, hallucination is an experience of the mind. One wonders. I'm talking about over 500 followers of Jesus experiencing the same thing at the same time. It doesn't hold water. Because it's a thing of the mind. So this one is just struggling to avoid the reality he rose up from the, the grave. Second, others say that the women and the disciples went to a wrong tomb. It was not the tomb that was there. But remember, this kaburi, the tomb where Christ was laid, was next to where he was crucified. It belonged to one of the serious religious leaders, members of the council called Joseph of Ramadhea. Joseph of Ramadhea was a man of means. He had resources. In fact, the Bible says, if the history of the Bible indicates that the first missionaries, the men who sponsored the ministry of Christ, when he was no more on the face of the earth, were Joseph of Ramadea and Nicodemus. These were members of the council. A famous doom. Ya mutu wenyako na mari, rasuli mari. Unaweza kumisa aru kenda kwa kanyi. Unaenda kwa nyumba ya, ya our president. Ukasema ni memis nyumba ya president. Ni meenda kwa kuingine. You can never. It's very clear. They knew where he was laid. They can miss maybe my house, but not the house of the president. So his story in Guinea, yote he ni kuwepa the reality that our Savior is risen, that the tomb is empty in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now my noise preacher, so you better get me there. <clears throat> now, there's another theory that Jesus, that the disciples came and stole the body. That they came and stole the body. This one does not hold water. You know, uh, <clears throat> the question of stealing the body was a device. If you read the book of Matthew 28, the question of stealing the body was a device. It was a scheme to cover the resurrection story of, of Sunday. If you read in the book of Matthew 28, verse 12 to 13, the Bible says, when the chief priests had met with the elders, and they devised what? A plan. They gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say, 
His disciples came during the night and told him while we were asleep. Unajua watu wa Mungu waje niwaambie. The body of Christ was under heavy curse. Heavy curse. How can some disciples who are so scared come and dare break through the old ranks of security and reach that body? It doesn't hold water. It doesn't justify anything here. Do you know if you read the Bible? So in Ajua, even when Jesus Christ was arrested, there are some disciples who followed Jesus Christ when he was being arrested. But the Bible talks about this young man, young man, who was following Jesus. And he was wearing some linen. And uh, when they grabbed him, wakisema wewe ni mmoja wa mwafuasi wa Nyasai. That is in Luya land. You are, you are mmoja wa mwafuasi wa Nyasai. Nasikia? Walipa mshika hivi, what happened is, the Bible records, he slipped out of his linen. Hmm? He slipped out of his linen, and uh, with his naked body, he took off. That is the kind of scare that was upon the disciples. Then how can you, how can you say such a kind of scare, the fellows? Where do they get the courage again to wake up and say, let's dare, they are sleeping, we are going to take the body of Christ. All these fabrications don't hold water. Hallelujah. And in fact, the Bible is very funny. Writers of the Bible insinuate that this man, this young man who slipped off the, his linen, sleeping in pajama, alisikia Yesu anaenda kusurupiwa naye akachomoka tu yeye watoto wana behave. Akachomoka tu mbio na kukimbia. Yesu anaenda kusurupiwa, anaenda kusurupiwa. Na aliposhika hivi akasema, "Ah!" akachomoka, akaenda. They insinuate, insinuate that this young man was basically mark himself. You know, John talks about there was a man. Mark talks about there was a young man. It is himself. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. You cannot dare. This will be a suicide mission, my friend. You can't dare. You want to die yourself. Can't dare do this. So that story does not hold. Maybe I say the final one, then I share one or two things, then it will be done. There is a story called the Soon, the Soon Theory. S W O R O N, the Soon or Soon Theory. It believes that Jesus did not really die at this crucifixion, but he was merely unconscious when he was laid in the tomb. And therefore, when he was inside there, he was resuscitated. Akarudi. You guys who do Sierra, you read this stuff here very much. Now, you see. This is a very invalid argument. Why is because uh, there are several reasons why this theory is invalid and uh, it is false because there were at least some three different groups that were involved in the crucifixion of Jesus. And these three different groups were satisfied concerning the fact of his death and cross. These were the Roman cards. These were Pilate. And these were the Sanhedrin. You know, the Roman cards had clear instructions. They were to ensure that, the, that Jesus Christ is dead. And these were the guys who were executors of this. So there was no way this kind of guys could be able to declare somebody who has fainted to be dead. In any case, Jesus was not the first one being crucified. Crucifixion was, the, was a penalty of the cross. So these guys, they knew when somebody's dead, Bernard. Because they were experienced and that was their job. They were earning money, earning their living from that kind of crucifixion. Bernard's son. He had endured enough beating, terrible beatings, in a bad way. 
And yet Job was to ensure that the task is complete. Jesus could not have survived crucifixion in the hands of Roman guards. I'm not talking about uh, 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 this, this uh, security firms of Bukse Hildred Yapa. I'm not talking about those kind of guys. I'm talking about Romans. They were brutal. The other group was the group of soldiers. The guys who were carding the tomb. Soldiers taking care of the tomb. The Bible says in Matthew 27, 62 to 66, on the next day, which followed by the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate and say, Sir, we remember while he was still alive, how that deceiver said, after three days, I will arise. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure. Command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. <laughs> Lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and I say that he is risen from the dead. So the last deception will be worse than the first one. But I say to them, you have a card, go your way, make it secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone and setting the card. Good job, my friend. It wasn't easy. So the soldiers were there. So the idea was very clear. The other group was the pilots. Pilate gave the order for Jesus to be crucified and entrusted his task to be carried by a Roman centurion. You know, a Roman centurion was a trusted and a proven commander of a hundred Roman soldiers. And you know what happened? It is when they ensure that this man is dead, that Joseph of Arimathea, one of the men in the ruling council, one of the leaders, religious leaders, one of them, had to go and seek permission that Pilate allow me to bury this guy because he's dead. They could not have allowed him to bury who was alive. So Jesus is alive. So you better correct your friends here who have taken some little knowledge. Yes, you have philosophy religious education in this university and they are giving around an idea. How sure are you that Jesus Christ rose from the grave? But they are going to one for the road and now they are bouncing on the road. They want he rose from the dead. He's alive. Hallelujah. You give God the glory because he's alive. Somebody give God the glory because he's alive. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are saying he is not in the tomb. Where is he? He is risen. If not, we are supposed to be sympathized with. We are supposed to pack our stuff and forget about this religion. But Jesus Christ is alive. Amen. As we move towards the end, the second question I asked, did Jesus know that he would die and be resurrected? We want to say, yes, he knew. He knew and I spoke about it. That's why the death of Jesus is not a miscalculation. You know, Muslims say that man planned and Allah planned. No. But man planned and Allah planned. So which means there is a, a counter plan for man. Let me tell you, it is God planned. Finished. The death of Jesus was a God planned death. Finished. What man was doing is to come and fit in the plan of God. Not to change the plan of God. That's why the plan of God remains secure. Superior to his. So, Jesus never lost. He knew he was going to die. He never lost when he was nailed on the cross. That is why you don't need to be so emotional on Good Friday. You know, there are some of you, Makiona, the pilgrims, pilgrims what? Progress film. And you see the nailing of Jesus on the cross. You become so emotional. You sympathize. These people are very crude. 
they are, they are very inhuman. Waja, our plan was being executed. The plan of God was being executed. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Good Friday. So when you think about Good Friday, when you think about the suffering of Jesus Christ, rejoice because your salvation was being purchased. Hallelujah. So his death never took him by surprise. Jesus was born to die. Born to die. And uh, yesterday I was just sharing with somebody. Unajua? Yesu alikuwa nasema, my time is up. Amen? My time is up. He understood the calendar of God. This is just a human. Listen to this. There's a man of God who was a good friend of ours. When his time came, the last moment in hospital, he, he found himself on the highway. And uh, he was holding a steering rod of a car. And he began driving. And he just said, I'm going home. And I, he was so focused. If you stand my way, I'll crush you. I am going home. Then he asked the wife, would you like to go with me? The wife said, not now. <laughs> Men and the women of God, Wait, they know when their time has come. Are we together? Can you walk with God, young people who are gathered here, until you know when your time has come? Apana wakati yako ikifika, unaanza kupanua mdomo unapeleka huku, unaanza kukazu huyu, unaanza kukiki hapa na left and right. No! When your time comes, get hold of, the, of your vehicle. That's how you go. Drive home! Unajua Yakopo wakati wake ulipofika akasema akaita watoto wake wote 12 na akasema nini wacha ni kujeni wakati wangu umefika nataka niwaelezee kila mmoja wenu atakuwa nani because my time has come i must speak a blessing to you i want you to walk with god until when your time comes you know my time has come people can pick up it of what you are saying People can hear what you are saying. When Miles Monroe came to this country, he said, I am now empty. It means he had done his purpose. He never stayed more than a year. He went to be with the Lord. It doesn't matter how you die. This is flesh and blood. Some of you keep on wondering whether you, you say, I'm moving now, but in the end. There's no good death. There's no, there, there is no honorable death. Death is death. Come on. You can be driving and you crash and you go home. Because kwa mafumbini ulitoka, mwili huu, mafumbini utarudi. How I got back to the soil is not your business. Sema amina. Hakuna kifo mzuri. Death is death. The Bible says it's appointed for man to die. Finish for me. Are you preaching with me? Is appointed for man to die once. It doesn't talk about how he died. Hallelujah. So Jesus Christ knew he was a death material born to die so that he can live forever. He knew it very well. I quickly ran through the scriptures. The Bible says in Genesis 3.15, the Bible says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall prove your head, and you shall prove his seed. It was pointing at the, 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 the enmity between Jesus Christ and the people and the world that crucified him. Genesis 22 verse 8, the Bible says, and Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. This was pointing at the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. In fact, the Old Testament, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So when you read this pages, this is the, 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 the hiding, the hidden power, the hidden truth of the New Testament. Psalm 16 verse 10, the Bible says, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. Nor will you let your faithful one see decay. Jesus Christ. 
Luke chapter 24 verse 44, Jesus said, These are the words I spoke to you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled. That's why it's written, that, is, that is written about me. In the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms. Kila kitu lazima kitatimia. In the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in the Psalms. So he's simply saying, whatever you see me going through was spoken about in the Bible. In the, written about in the Holy Book. John chapter 2 verse 22, the Bible says, after he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. Then they believed the scriptures and the word that the Lord has spoken to them. We can go on and we can go on and we can go on. We can go on and we can go on. One clear fact is that Jesus came. He knew very well he has come. He has a short time on the face of the earth that he's going to die. And him dead means I'll die to live forever. So he knew it very well. Nothing could stop him from dying. That's why at one time when the men who were supposed to, to execute the divine mandate of God from above were, were executing it through the soldiers who had arrested Jesus Christ. And that Peter, the outspoken disciple, always comes up and wants to say, no, master, you don't need to suffer this much. How did Jesus Christ call him? Away from you, devil. Because he knew this is the devil incarnate. I came to die. When he was arrested and, uh, and uh, there was one, one, Peter pulls out a sword and removes the ear of one of the soldiers. Jesus said, don't bring other issues here. Me, this, this is my sword. Don't bring out these other battles of flesh and blood. I was born to die. Hallelujah. Good Friday is our day when we celebrate the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let me move towards the close of my sharing today. Therefore, what does this resurrection mean to me today? What does it mean to you today? What does this resurrection mean to this church this morning? Number one, Jesus is unique. Tell your neighbor he's unique. How to show that something is unique. If you want to show that something is unique, let's assume my brother here, my son here, is, 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 is somebody else. Are we together? And I call him A, and he becomes B. Once I show that A is equal to B, then he's unique. The same thing. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ declares he is unique. In other words, there is no any other like him. We cannot. Now, let's, let's belong to the same religious um, affiliations for the sake of the peace of this country, but we are not the same. Come on. Let our brother Muslim brothers come together. Let the, Mus the Buddhas come together. Uh, whoever they are called come together. The Shri's come together. Let's, let's work for the peace of this nation. Well done, but we are not. We are not the same. Our Savior is unique. He is incomparable. Why is because Ukienda kwa Gaburi Hawa Jama, their remains are there. You know where Muhammad was buried? I'm not against any Muslim brother who is gathered here today. By God's grace, you are in the house. May the grace touch you wherever you are. If at all you came, by the grace of God. But listen to the voice of the Spirit of God. Muhammad was buried in al Masjid and Nabai, mosque of the prophet, in the city of Medina, in Saudi Arabia. That is where he was buried. A bit of his remains can be traced. But Jaribu kutafuta remains a yes. Historia pia inasungumuzia. Jaribu kutafuta remains a yes. Utapata. Because he physically resurrected. With the whole body. Pew, pew, 
In fact, I am. Time always messes me up in this university. Listen to this. In fact, church, when I was reading at this young man called Mark, who was saying there was a young man who was following Christ Jesus, then he slipped out of uh, <laughs> out of the linen. Are we together? It was a shadow of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It was a shadow. Because you know what happened? When the day of resurrection came, Jesus Christ slipped out of the linen. Because when, when Peter entered the tomb, he found his linen folded, put aside, aside, but the body was not there. He was only saying that he was just confirming that resurrection is coming. Hallelujah. Buddha, his body was cremated. And the relics were put in a monument. They are kept up to now, like what, what, what they call the, um, the, that, uh, the, that, uh, the, the temple of the tooth in Sri Lanka is the place where the, the right tooth relic of Buddha is kept up to now. You can trace some remains of Buddha. Jesus, you can't trace them. Anza kutafuta. Atakupata kama unatafuta. Utapata katika jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. There's another religion called Baha'u'llah. The founder of the Baha'i faith. He can be found in the shrine of Baha'u'llah located in Israel. Can be found there. Hallelujah. I want to make a statement here. The tomb of Christ is famous because of what it does not contain. Amukusikia. Unakianda kwa mtiani ndiwa muntaki kusikia maneno ya roho. Sama amina. Keep God a hand clap in the house. Sakaya la babushi. Seke tala babu. The tomb of Christ is famous because of what it does not contain. The tomb of Christ is an attraction site because it doesn't have the body. It doesn't have the remains. Because it is empty. Glory to God. And you know what? Listen to this. The angels did not remove the, the stone so that Jesus could leave the tomb. No. But listen to me. Listen to me. Some of you have not gotten right. Munafikriangaji, ati wakati roo mungu alishuka, akatingiza ye kaburi ya Yesu Christo. Maraika wakashuka na ili mbubi ya mungu. Wakatoa, wakatoa yore. Let me tell you my friend, the resurrection does not require assistance of an angel. Come on. Does not require assistance of an angel. In fact, when your hour will come, the Bible says, in the twinkling of an eye, my God, when my hour will come, we shall be walking together like this. Nenda kwa lecture hall. Na mimi niko hapo, nafundisha yezabu yangu ya mad 2.22. Ama mad 3.11. Na kumbe the hour has come for the rushers to be ruptured. Niko kwa, kwa, nina sema now, can, can we now come, The name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So the angels did not remove the stone so that Jesus could leave the tomb, but so that the disciples and others can go in and see. How? Bari ya kukumbuka kwa Yesu Christo, malaika wakashuka wa wingi. Wakatoa hiyo mawe. So that the others can come and see. Otherwise, nobody could be able, no human being could have rolled that stone away. It was powerfully sealed. It required bulldozers. It was a whole ceremony to roll it away. But it required the power from above, the angelic power, to roll it away. I love it. Two, straight linen. The tomb is empty. Where have you taken my savior? Where is he? 
until Christ appeared. And I told him, don't be afraid. It is me. And when she heard that, the Bible says, she ran where the disciples were. Alipo fika kwa nyumba kwenye waliko wako hapo. Mimi na shukuru Peter. Peter ni mutu wa mana. Na itaji Petero katika kanisa la mungu. Petero ni mutu wa chap chap. Haraka haraka. He doesn't put a lot of reasoning and theology and stories about it. Alipo sikia ya kwamba at yesu wa mefufuka. While Thomas was there. Ah, nizipo shika pare boa na siyesi ya mini mambo ya yesu. <laughs> na kiswahili mingi mingi na shengi mingi na swaka mingi mingi Peter Biblia inasema ya kwamba alifanya nini alichomoka ndio I like Peter's in the house Chairman you have Peter's in this church when you are going to pepo kwa hii compound they don't think about it yes katika jina la Yesu pepo toka You know, when I was newly employed at, as a high school teacher, and there was a boy who was possessed with evil spirits, and they knew I'm born again. So, Peter, I abandoned all my lessons that day. Picked the young man and took him to a, to a dining hall. So, I was just, I'm one of the Peters, you know, success. Hours upon hours, casting out demons. We need Peters in the house. Hallelujah. So, so Peter ran, although he was overtaken by John. <laughs> but the issue is he ran. He ran. But now, when John reached there, Akansa ku kusita sita. Peter si mutu mchezo. When he arrived, he entered. <laughs> wow! Praise the name of the Lord. How many of you love the gospel of Jesus Christ? The preaching of the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus declared in the book of Revelation. Wow, time, Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 to 18. The Bible says. Of course this John the Revelator. The Bible says. John writes and says. Revelation 1 17 to 18. When I saw him. That is Jesus Christ. I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his hand, right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I am the first and I am the last. I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and heads in my hands. Praise the name of the Lord. So Jesus is unique. I want to finalize. Give me some 10 minutes. I'll be done. Number two. The relevance of this. It is a divine stamp of approval. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is a divine stamp of approval that God, the creator of the heaven and earth, he is God and nobody can compare to him and what he has planned must come to pass. What he said in Genesis, what he said in the Psalms, what he says in Revelation, what he said in the gospel must come to pass. is an approval that is a son of God. So there is only one son of God we know whom God has approved by resurrecting from the dead. And this is the man, Jesus Christ. Say my amen. Number three. There is always hope in our darkest trial. In this resurrection, what it brings to us is this. Church, there is hope in our darkest trials. The resurrection proves to us that in our darkest, deepest, darkest hour, 
in our greatest love or in our greatest disappointment, in our worst tragedy or in our worst setbacks in life, he who conquered death and gave, gives lives, he conquered death and the grave lives in us and is able to do exceedingly abundantly far and above what we can think about. Church, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is hope for us. Hallelujah! In the life here, ni matumaini kwetu kwa maisha haya. Ya kwamba chako wanapitia katika hali ilio ngumu kabisa. If you conquer death, conquer the power of the grave, in all my setbacks and my troubles, Jesus is able to lift me up. Hallelujah. Yesterday in the church, one of the ministers came with a young man who lost his parents when he was only seven years. As if it's not enough, he's physically challenged. He's on a wheelchair. And the young man gave us a testimony how it was so dark in his life. And the bishop whom he came with led him to Christ in his tender age. God of all miracles. This young man was able to go through high school. When he got admitted to Kibabe University, the question of who pays fees was a problem. God had to command the vice chancellor, Professor Ipara, and he paid all his fees plus surplus. He has 25,000 on the account. Now, as we talk, he has a job with the county government of Bungoma. The resurrection of Jesus Christ tells us, however dark the situation can be for you, however difficult the coin can be for you, however terrible the setbacks can be for you, our God is able to do exceedingly above, above all that we can think and imagine in Christ Jesus. Why do I say this? Because the Bible says the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave is at work in us. Hallelujah. Is that work in believers? Time is a challenge. You may finish like this. The same power that raised Christ from the grave is working in you. If you're a child of God, it's working in you. You only need to tap into this power. Do you know what happened? The Bible says Jesus Christ is the first fruit. You know that scripture? That Jesus Christ is the first fruits. Now, Najua, the first fruits in the olden Israel time, it was celebrated after pain, after, uh, after, 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 after a Passover. It was 50 days after Passover, there was a celebration of the first fruits, which was called Pentecost. And uh, and the people would come with the first fruits of their produce and they would wave them before, before the congregation, before the priests and everyone. The Bible says Jesus Christ is the first fruit. Now, if we have the first fruit, then we have the harvest. If we have the first fruit, then we have the harvest. And that is why the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were together gathered in the upper room. And you know what happened? Something like tongues of fire come and settled on each one of them. And they were all baptized in the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in other tongues. Do you know what happened? Peter stood on that day and there was a harvest. 3,000 men gave their life to Jesus Christ. The death of Jesus opens the highway for harvest. Listen to me, church. You are set for a harvest. We never had that yet. We have tuned off. You are set for a harvest. You are set for a harvest. Hallelujah. When Jesus rose from the grave, he paved way for a harvest. Souls for the kingdom. Are we together? Multiplication in our life. Increase in our lives. That is the Pentecostal harvest, which is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
cry. What a joy to know that he's risen. Let's bow down our heads. What a joy to know that he's risen. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. We give you the honor. We give you the exhortation this morning. You are alive and well. We bless you because you're our God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If Jesus rose from the dead, then you have to accept all that he said. Because all that he said is true. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want to give somebody an opportunity to celebrate the harvest, the being born again, being part of this victorious army. Men and the women who know their God, who know that their Savior is unique, is incomparable, the man Jesus Christ. This morning you can say yes. I want to do that. I want to surrender to him. I want him to take over my life. I want his blood to preserve me, the Easter blood to preserve me. I want the Passover protection of the blood of Jesus to preserve me over this Easter. Don't miss out on this important moment. If you are there and you say, Pastor, can you just pray with me? You can cross over in the name of Jesus. If you are there and you say, I want to surrender to Jesus, raise up your hand. I want to pray with you. That's the beginning point. I want to surrender to Jesus. I want to have fellowship with him. I want to walk with him. I want him to remain Lord and Savior of my life. If you are there, I want to pray with you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We honor you because of the essence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our Father, this moment, in humility, we surrender to the season of Easter. Now, Lord, the blood that was shed on Christ may take away the stains of our lives. We also pray that King of Kings and Lord of Lords we will experience newness and refreshment in our hearts and a new beginning in our spirit. We thank you because you are alive. Father, I thank you for these young people who are here, zealous for you. I speak a word of blessing upon them, O oh God. That as Lord, they get used of you in this university and beyond. You are preparing ministers for the world going out as ambassadors of the kingdom of God to bring forth the wonders of God. I pray for great revelation and knowledge over the resurrection of Jesus in their life and may they be blessed as they go out. May they be blessed as they come in. Father, I want to pray for the exams which begin on Tuesday day. And our God and our Father, the way they have been faithful to you, remember the works of their hands and make them heads and not tails. Some are distracted in the fees and rares that they wonder whether they will ever see these exams or not. Our God, you are able to bring a harvest, a multiplication. May you command a blessing from the east, from the west. Just as you did for George through the vice chancellor, you can do it for so and so through somebody somewhere else because of the destiny this one's carry for your own glory. Our Father, we thank you and we give you praise. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name.